Okay, uh, selamat pagi and very good morning to everyone uh, and welcome to this ProQuest dissertation and thesis global. Uh, to, uh, how you can maximize this uh, content, yeah? ProQuest dissertation and thesis global to, to support your research journey. Yeah? That's, the, that's the topic that we're going to discuss uh, for today's session. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Sharifa and the entire team for organizing this session. And I will just give you a little bit of introduction about myself. Um, my name is Kurinji Mala, and I'm the training and consulting partner with ProQuest. Uh, of course, I'm residing in Malaysia. I can conduct the session with a bilingual if you are okay with that, or I can go on with English also. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let me just start this, uh, the the uh, the objective of this session. So this objective of this session is to evaluate some of the best practices. Yeah. For Selecting a topic uh, or beginning your research. So, uh, so this why this program, this program is basically aimed at the new research scholars. It can be undergraduate or master students or inexperienced master students who would like to embark on their research journey. So, this is aimed to those um, audiences. So, if you are already an, an expert in, uh, you know, writing your research, um, this may not be suitable. But this is definitely aimed to the new research scholars. Yeah. So, and um, conducting an effective literature review. So that is actually that topic itself, very heavy topic, how to do a, a literature, con how to conduct an effective uh, literature review. But we will see how we can use some of this content from progress to support you to write an effective uh, literature review and writing for a maximum impact. Yeah? So we will see that. And of course, during writing, we need to identify and avoid uh, some of the pitfall, uh, pitfalls of uh, dissertation and thesis uh, when you're writing a dissertation. Yeah. So, and also um, how um, once you have completed your uh, your dissertation, uh, uh, and if you want to publish, especially your master's or even your um, doctoral uh, thesis yeah, or dissertation, so how you want to publish it internally. In your in your institution, or you also want to amplify your research to the whole entire world by uh, being part, being um, contributing through this progress platform. We will see that, and also along this way, we will see how some of these progress um, features supports you in your academic writing. So this is going to be uh, something in all in one uh, kind of a session, kind of um, a compact section. Yeah, okay. So now. When we did a survey, we asked students, what is your top challenges? Yeah, we asked graduate students, what are your top challenges uh, during your academic years or during your academic journey? So the question answer that we actually gained, one of their most top challenge is to writing their dissertation or thesis. The second most uh, challenge is uh, finding a job. So, but I think when you, you, when you write a very good dissertation and thesis, finding a job should be a little bit more easier. So this is what uh, they have said. That's why we want to focus how ProQuest can support um, uh, students, uh, you know, in supporting them uh, to writing their dissertation or thesis. So getting started on your thesis or dissertation. So you know that uh, there is actually kind of a process to go through to start uh, uh, when we, we talk about the graduate students research journey. So whether it's like, you know, whether you want to write a topic, whether you have an, have an idea, uh, how do you derive to that an idea? How do you want to define your research topic? Identifying the gaps uh, that defining your research topic, you know, all this in, all these um, thoughts will come to you when you are actually embarking on your research journey. So if you look at this journey, uh, it, sorry. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay, so when you look at this research journeys that we actually thinking about the ideas, writing a proposal, and then come back to research. Yeah. So once, although this research is, um, you know, separated as a next step, but while you're doing finding for ideas or writing a proposal, you would have already started your research um, uh, process. Yeah. By then. So again, another another thought is when you are doing your research, this is where you need to evaluate some of the dissertation or some of the findings has already been done in the past, so that you get an idea. Oh, in this topic. 
this particular topic has been discussed and this is how it's presented. This is the findings like and how do I want to take it to the next level? So this is how you want to evaluate the dissertation and what methodology has been used, or what are the theoretical framework, uh, what has been discussed and what is the recommendation for the new uh, for the future, future research. Yeah? So all that things you will evaluate. And of course, while evaluating those information, you will need to manage your information. You need to curate your information. You apply some of your literature searching skills and etc. So that is the part that you will um, focus on your process. So while you are doing your research, you've got some ideas, then you need to start writing first because if you wait until you finish your research and if you want to start writing, you definitely will have some challenges in managing your timeline. So definitely start search uh, research. When you have some enough information, you will start writing. So you will not wait until you complete. So that's why we call this when you start your writing, when you start your research, you write, and then you go back to do a little bit of research to, to enhance or to enrich whatever the gap you find while you're writing. And then you go back. So this this process will basically will research writing, research writing, and then it will be um, you know repeated many times. Yeah. Okay, let me keep the pointer. So this always um, back and forth, back and forth. So while you are writing, so make sure that you frame your work, uh, frame your writing very early. Uh, these are things I will share with you later towards the uh, to, as we go on. Yeah, plan. There's a schedule that you need to plan. Put in your time. How much time that you want to spend, uh, and things like that. So of course, once you've got your information, you need to analyze it, synthesize it, and you need to present your findings. Yeah. So usually we we will recommend or in fact the uh, bootcamp, the research bootcamp, recommend you to start with the first uh, draft. It has, it, this does not need to be perfect. Basically, you just start a draft. If you don't start a draft, you will never start writing. So that is why the zero draft is very, very important. Okay, okay now when you have completed, let's assume that you have completed your dissertation and thesis, you've got it approved, it's all uh, ready, um, and uh, it's, it, you've made, basically you've completed the, the dissertation and thesis, then you will probably looking at options to publish it, whether in the internal repository. But when you publish it in the internal repository, that content is visibly, the visibility of the content is through the local, either through your, within your institution or some local um, access, yeah? But if you then say, okay, I think that I need to amplify my information to the uh, to the world, then you can publish it with PQDT. So this is straightforward. Once you have published it with PQDT, you can either publish it later on. You move on publishing as an ebook or even as a scholarly journals from whatever that um, from, from from whatever that um, content you've done. You enhance it, you enrich it, and you publish it as scholarly journals. So I'm not going to go into that detail. We probably will focus on uh, here, this part here, the research and writing. Yeah. So along this way, actually, you will have progress resources to support you. Yeah, to find ideas, to start your research, to even writing, to and also to promote your uh, content. Okay. The first, the how do I, where do I review a dissertation? The first place to go to, yeah is your own university. So within your university, in your internal repository, make sure that you find for all the dissertation or this is done so relevant to the topic that you have you have in your mind. You maybe have not defined your topic. You may have a very broad topic. So you go into it, read, review it, what kind of research has been done um, and things like that. And of course, department, so that be relevant to your research. And always talk to the advisors. Advisors are your um, the most uh, main reference person, yeah? So the advisor will let you know. Sometimes they have an idea and say, actually, I have a topic. I'm doing my research, so I want you to branch out some uh, topic within my, my uh, relevant to my research. So you can talk to your advisor from there. You can start your, your topic can be defined later. And of course, peers in your subject area is very important because that's where you will find, okay, in this topic, this many uh, finding has been done, this research has been done. So this way, your peers can be not only within the local institution, uh, it can be also from other universities uh, abroad. Uh, like if you have access to 
um, Proquest dissertation and thesis, you can see the, your, your peers, or if you call it people who actually worked on the same subject area in other institutions, including the top universities. Okay, so you can go for those review of those institution review of this um, this uh, dissertation and thesis across the world. Okay, so that's where you have your ProQuest dissertation and thesis global. When you access to this platform, you have access to over 5.1 million uh, dissertation and thesis, the actual graduate works. That's uh, from 1637 to current year. So in actual, you have uh, you 2.8 million in full text, in full text PDF, uh, and uh, the works from the 1743, yeah, 1743. And every year, Every year, there's a 200,000 works being added. So you know that the research will evolve today. If, yeah, if you have looked at the research in the past and you want to see upcoming researchers that are relevant to the topic, this is the place you go to because it's, it's evolves uh, because the constant information is being added in this uh, platform. Of course, this is uh, um, recognized as uh, official uh, repository for you, uh, uh, for dissertation for the US Library of Congress. And you can see some of these top ranked university has been uh, publishing in this this um, in this progress dissertation and thesis, which means you have visibility to what research is being done in the institution like Oxford universities or even um, Cambridge or even talking about the Ivy Leagues in, in US and so on. So or some of the top universities has participated and we have the visibility to see their research um, and their findings. Yeah, so. Again, this is includes works by authors or graduate works of uh, more than 4,200 graduate schools uh, from universities from over 100, uh, 100 countries across. Yeah? So it's from US to UK. Uh, if you're talking about Asia, we have India, China, and Hong Kong uh, in the top list, uh, and also expanding in Southeast Asia. So if you want to be participating in, in contributing the content, you can be also one of, uh, one of the contributor. Uh, if you want your dissertation and thesis to be amplified as well. And it's accessible by 4 million researchers, yeah? 4 million researchers uh, around the world. So you can, uh, you can uh, imagine that if you have in your, if your research is, uh, is part of this content and it will be accessible by 4 million researchers across the world. Okay, this is just a, a summary of what I talk, talked about earlier. So you have access to 5.5 million, 5.1 million um, content with 2.8 million in full text, and the, you know content is being added. Just this is a, this is just a summary. And why is it important? Uh, that is important for um, for you to have access to this platform or to the uh, international or we we say we talk about dissertation and thesis across the world because it provides you in that scholarly examples yeah so sometimes we we do not have how do i want to structure my uh, dissertation you know maybe it's already given to you when you talk to your advisor but if you are reading more and more you have access to more and more information then you can also um you know have a good discussion with your advisor so if you say can i add this as an, uh, as an additional uh, content and things like that so you have a very good opportunity to discuss with your advisors so because in dissertation in 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 this platform profess dissertation in thesis or PQDT, it provides you a detail of examples um, of the actual uh, graduate works yeah so you can find it here further you will see that uh, there is a new insights in, in if you're talking about a topic what is the new uh, or the trend of this topic uh, it also can be discovered in this uh, in this platform. On top of that, very importantly, we always say find a gap so that you can uh, take it to the next level. So you can go into most of this scholarly um, scholarly uh, um, uh, examples, yeah, like the dissertation and thesis. And if you go into the table of content and you look up for the recommendation and look for the um, recommendation for the future research, I think that is where you will fine, okay, this research is something similar to me, but what is that being recommended? So I can take it to the next level. I will show you how to do that in this platform as well. And um, this content, because it's it's actually um, amplified through this progress platform, 
So the content that you provide is very highly and in, uh, indexed and in, with the enha uh, enhancement in a robust indexing system, so that it's easily can be discovered. Yeah. So because of that, uh, if you have uh, contributed the content in this platform, this can be easily discovered by the others through this uh, platform searching. So okay, and you this is the place proper dissertation, and this is the place where your research um, you have um, in depth research where it is not published anywhere else. Yeah. So basically, I have talked about this. Is this some of these um, some of the other other information that why you use a dissertation for this is so if you need if you notice um, it will provide uh, more coverage than a journal article. Yeah, so you have like almost like 200,000, 200, 200 over pages versus the journals articles are usually be very short. Yeah, They're 10 to 12 pages or even below 20 pages. So this is very in depth analysis is even compared to a journal article. So this is that's why it's important to have a review on this, uh, this platform. Of course, the rest of it I have already covered. Okay. So for, for a general, um, uh, for the just a minute. Yeah. Okay, just one minute. Let me. Actually, there should not be a password required, but it is. If, if it's required, this is this will be the generic password. Okay, I just shared the generic passwords PQ twenty twenty one. Yeah, so those who want to join, they can join through that. Okay. Okay. So some of this key component, this is a general uh, key com uh, general um, key components of dissertation. So some it is depends on the subject of uh, your research. Yeah, depends on the university's uh, preferences, your your advisor's preferences. But these are basically the components, key components. So the structure, like you know, you have an introduction where you talk about the research topic. Uh, questions, the challenges, the gaps, the unanswered questions, uh, the hypotheses and the statistical used and so on. Then you talk about the method. How do you want to, uh, um, to conduct your, um, your dissertation and thesis or how do you want to run this, this whole thing yeah, using a different methodology? So what um, describe the population, the samples, the consents, incentives and et cetera. And of course, uh, you will talk even about the data analysis and so on. So that is the method and the results. Okay, what is your findings like? Uh, you can present it uh, narratively or in a graphical formats and so on. So once you have re presented the results, then you will talk about the the discussion itself. So this is where you talk about the, uh, you know, what are the, uh, you know, the limitations in, you know, interpreting interpreting the findings first, and then the limitation, the implication of the findings, and also you will talk about, okay, this is the limitation. So the what is the recommendation to your future project projects uh, to the uh, the future uh, research like to be, and of course you will uh, have the list of source that's been cited. Yeah, it's a list of sorts to to just acknowledge uh, the uh, the content that you have cited. Yeah. Okay, so this will be the very standard key components. But later, when we go into this platform uh, to look for a dissertation and thesis, you will see some slightly different. But the main components will be always there. Yeah. Okay. Now. How can this information help me? So, if I go into this platform, um, if you go into the, um, there's a, actually a dissertation and this is um, good. Yeah, let me give you the site to that good cam. So if you click on the link that I've shared, basically it will take you to the uh, dissertation and uh, this, uh, this is actually, a, this is called as an e-learning companion. And if you scroll down, you'll see the uh, dissertation bootcamp um, e-tutorials, yeah? So in this e-tutorials, if you go into um, the, first, uh, the first tutorial, you will know how to identify some opportunities to improve uh, and uh, and also uh, fill the gaps in the research studies. Yeah. So how do I use uh, 
ProQuest platform to find this. This is what I want to share with you. Just let me uh, share the examples, how to build the research from the prior research. So before I go in, go into the platform and show you, you can see that uh, this is where you go to. Okay, so there is the getting started on the dissertation and thesis. So this is where it will talk about how do you want to select a topic, uh, what is the process for completing a dissertation and thesis. All this discussion will take place here, and you can. Uh, this is the e-learning module, so you can actually uh, use it for your uh, to start your research on here. And subsequently, after you have found those, um, the top, define your topics, you can also talk about how do I find for information to support my arguments. So this is where you will find the uh, efficient discovery or research curations um, uh, modules will support you there. And thirdly, that will be the last part where you can need to say, how do I plan for a productive writing plan. I need to have, I need to start my uh, plan and how do I start? So these are some best practices shared in this, uh, this um, modules as well. So in this session, I will uh, take you through some high level of this um, e-learning e tutorials, but of course you can explore it later. Yeah. So this content is actually uh, the contributed by the expert contributors such, such as uh, Jane, uh, Jane Allard, and she's the um, Associate Dean from uh, Cornell University, and Ken Helvey, she's from the, the uh, Texas Wesleyan University. So here, these are all uh, very easily accessed. This is actually on the web, on the open web, you can access to the site. And my recommendation is to put this into your library portal, uh, link link it, or you can embed it into your learning management system as well, so the students have continuous access to um, to start their dissertation and thesis, uh, the guide for the, to writing a dissertation and thesis. Okay, so there is some uh, downloadable content, the learning aids and tools as part of this. So let me um, take you to that example. How do you want to use this platform? Okay, so I'm here. So if you are able to, you need to access this through your library portal. Yeah, if you access to ProQuest dissertation and thesis or ProQuest platform itself, you will be able to come to this page. So in this page, of course, you have other databases. But what I want to focus today is more on how do you want to use the dissertation and thesis global uh, directly. So I'm going to take to the advanced search page. So let's say um, I have a topic I've already discovered. I already know what um, to search for. Yeah, for example. So let's say I want to do this search on. Okay. This is my. This is the uh, journal, or this is the title that I have. So just, just example, just very quickly. So because it's title, I can really. Go, go into this title directly. So when you are evaluating this content, because you already identified what uh, dissertation that you want to go that go, go through. Yeah, for example, you already have the references, so you can go into this detail. Look at some details here. It's cited by three other uh, articles or three other uh, dissertation and theses. All the references. Uh, used to come up with this dissertation and thesis are all listed here. And so if you go into this detail, usually it's recommended to read the abstract first. Why is it important to read the abstract? Is sometimes it gives you an idea, yeah, this is worth of reading because it actually have a gap that I can uh, take it on. So it, you will find some information around here at the bottom here saying that uh, this may not be, um, this has some limitation and there's a recommended recommendation here. If you don't see that here, no, no problem, but basically you will read this to make sure it's relevant to your research topic. Yeah, Re your research topic can be um, any any um, any 
any topics. It can be from science uh, topics, health and medical. It can be business. It can be uh, computer computer science. It can be any topics. Yeah. So you you just have to pick pick for the right topic that relevant to you. I'll show you if you want to go by subject searching. Yeah. So this is uh, an example of um, highly accessed highly accessed uh, dissertation and thesis. Yeah. So I just want to take you through this and to get the uh, structure of this content. Okay. Very important to go to the structure of this content. Okay. Here we go. So if you go in before, even you go into reading the whole content, always review this part here. Okay. So you see that mostly definitely will have the introduction talking about the state statement of the problem. It depends on the uh, top the, uh, the research topic. Yeah, is it the this is the research topic is all about. And also, depending on the subjects that you're working on, and of course, advisors, so you can, have, but mainly you will have this kind of set. This is the, uh, the common structure where you have your backgrounds, uh, your introduction with the background, the nature of study, research questions are all defined here. And of course, the literature review of each of these um, uh, pack factors or uh, the framework that you have put it in, that will be a literature review for each of that. And the research methodology and your findings. And also here, finally, the implication, recommendation, and the conclusion. So usually at this chapter is where you will see the recommendation for practice and the recommendation for the future research. So usually we will advise you to go into the recommendation. Okay, you probably read the abstract. You probably look at the future um, recommendation for future research. This will be easier for you to um, to say to make a decision. Okay, this topic that maybe I can do it slightly differently. Um, you know, take it to the next level. But there's a gap here, so I want to maybe fulfill the gap uh, by you know apl uh, applying some um, some techniques or some uh, additional enhancement to that. So you will now easy for you to look out for those um, those information. So this is what we say. Okay, how I can use this information to uh, to go to the next level of your research. Okay, so for those who are have this is because you you know what you want exactly. But for those who are not um, have not defined your topic, so usually you can use this platform and say if you are looking for example education technology. Yeah, your topic can be any. Yeah, I'm just giving you example educational technology, and you go into the subject indexing. Okay, then you see, okay, is there any research is relevant to educational technology? Yes, these are all the dissertation and thesis, yeah, from different universities. You can see who are the institutions, yeah, Capella Universities, Walden, uh, Indiana, and more. Actually, you can click more here and see who are who have contributed. You can go to the universities directly if you want to, but my suggestion is to look at the subjects, yeah. So from the education technology, are you looking at curriculum? Are you looking at the teaching education? So if you are focused on teaching education, you can focus on it and say the technology used to support the teaching. Yeah. So this is uh, like you know how how to adapt to the educational gaming into the K to twelve teachings and and and, and etc. So and of course there are more other um, other um, topics you would probably want to explore. So it's all here. So this is like kind of uh, exposing you to more uh, research topic, even though your broad research is on educational technology. But if you want to go into detail uh, in depth, then you have other options. On top of that, this part here, the index terms are more granular. Okay? So this is what I would say. Are you talking about the technology integration to education system or educational? Um, is it instructional technology? You know, you can go into. Uh, every of these, this is for you to explore further. Okay, all right. So I want to go back to the slide again. Uh, before I go to the slide, there is a question: Are all the services available if I log into the UMT account? Okay, whatever that you see here, whatever that I'm showing you here, the entire content is available to you to your uh, library portal. I will I will show that uh, towards the end of the session with the help of Musharifa. Yeah, okay. it's all available in your in in your institution. This is available to all of you. Okay. 
Okay, now let's uh, go back to the slide. Okay, selecting or refining a topic. So I have actually showed you some examples how you can use this platform to discover the, the topics basically. So here are some examples before you define a topic. So usually, like I said, develop a topic of an extension of your advisor's research. So usually advisors will have an idea. They probably are doing their own research and probably want to you support their research from your findings perspective. So also you can talk to them. Uh, so this may not require any proposals or defense of a research proposal. So you can actually work with them very closely and go ahead with the uh, topic that's part of the extension of your advisor. So otherwise, if you say, no, I have been thinking about this topic of interest of mine, my, I want to do my topic more ind independently, then you need to discover, you have your topic like earlier, but you need to know what is that you want to write. So bear in mind, when you want to write this topic, you have to think, you have to put, you have to have all your criteria to think about. Yeah, it's not like, oh, I like this topic, I want to write it. But the most important is how, um, applicable is this topic uh, to your uh, your subject or the work that you are working on or how is this going to be uh, relevant for next five years next 10 years so you do not want to do something it's going to obsolete um, once you've completed the research but you want to make sure or you you don't want to do something it's already passed there's no need uh, there's no need for the findings um, to be done now so make sure there is a uh, there is a requirement or the uh, um, the relevancy for this this dissertation and thesis for next five years, or even you think about your career. So I move on in my career. This is a very important topic I want to talk about. I want to work on. You know, make sure that all that um, is thought through. Yeah, the process is through, through. So not just to just don't have the narrowed mind. I just want to complete the dissertation. So because. This is from my experience. So if you can write a very good dissertation and thesis, you when you go for the, especially for those who are going to go back to Korea, going for an interview, looking for fundings and things like that, you can talk about it, talk about the, the length of the uh, your dissertation, that the, the, the analysis of your dissertation. Yeah. So this is if you have a topic to discuss about. Yes, and if you are an undergraduate, if you are just doing um if you wanted to go into into you know know more about your dissertation and thesis, if you complete it, and if you go for an interview, then usually if you do not ex have experience, what do you want to talk about? You will talk about uh, your dis dissertation and thesis. So you must have some solid points you want to talk about. So make sure that you you do the right one. Uh, think about this from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Now. Other areas, the so areas that you want to explore, uh, it's uh, to define a topic is to, to make sure that it's interest from your course or degree program. You do not want to uh, divert from that. So you make sure that it's relevant to your degree program. Of course, you have probably read uh, some articles or uh, you know books that's uh, you know on the issues of interest. And another point that I want to share here is uh, the newspapers, reading the newspapers or the current uh, can be the local newspapers, can be the international newspapers and talk, think about what is the discussion uh, that has been discussed or has been argued or debated about this topic. So then, you know, this is actually a relevant topic that I want to, I mean, it might interest many people to read about this, this topic. Yeah, so that is. Um, that is one way. Of course, you can talk to your researchers who have published uh, to access to to have the access to copies, or you can even go to the dissertation and thesis to find the similar information. Okay, so this is what I was uh, sharing with you using the PQD2 to explore the latest trend in the, the research. So here, basically, you are your topic is very broad on microbiology, but you want to see how the Cornell University, one of the um, Ivy League universities in US, what is their findings like that's uh, topics that relevant to microbiology. This is very broad, of course, you can narrow it down later. So from here, you can see that you probably don't want to look at in the past um, uh, dissertation. You probably want to focus the trends yeah, to see the, see the future trend. So you probably look at last eight years of content, last 10 years of content, or last five years of content. So you can use this platform to uh, refine, define the timing as well and the topics that within microbiology that you want to explore. Yeah, this is just an example. Okay. And you can also uh, use, um, you know, you don't have, this is 
very much exploring. This is like, I'm really know what I want. I want all the dissertation and thesis that talks about the um, machine learning uh, as in the title, as well as the discussion about machine learning should appear in the abstract. So this is very, very targeted. You know, you can go straight to the, the, the point. And of course, you can again refine the timeline and go into the index terms like instead of going, uh, you know, going directly to the index term, more granular index terms here. Okay. Now, exploring dissertation and thesis or PQDT alone, it is not enough to, to, to write your literature review or to even write your dissertation and thesis. So you need to have your access to other content such as scholarly journals, yeah, and of course, um, conference papers or working papers or trade journals and so on. So you, if if you have access to some of this progress collection to access to your dissertation, your scholarly journals, of course you can access to those. Yeah, going for the full text and the full reviewed uh, peer reviewed content. But if you don't have access to any of progress, uh, other other contents. Um, from ProQuest, you can explore other databases, of course. So you need to have combination of your scholarly journals. Uh, dissertation and thesis is basically to identify and see what findings like, what kind of examples that I can follow, what ideas I can take. And then once you start writing, you need to, um, when you need to cite it, you probably need to have, make sure you have your uh, access to your scholarly journals. Newspapers is to make sure that you are in the current trend, you are talking about the current issues and so on. So explore to other content as well before you um, even writing the content here. Yeah? Okay, this is basically the education material in the PQDT lib guide. Okay. Okay. So how do I know that I have found my topic? If this is there, you will go to the content gap. Remember, we looked at the content gap to look up for a future recommendation. So of course you can go into the uh, getting started on your dissertation and thesis, explore your topic in the e-learning materials to, know, to, to learn more about it. Or basically you will have asked your questions like, what question remain unanswered or inadequately addressed? Or are these unique compelling questions? Will my advisor support this topic? So that is all very important, yeah? So you will, uh, you will very important to make sure that you are in line with your um, advisor's um, thoughts, yeah? your thoughts and your advisor's thoughts should sync so that you you can uh, go ahead, ahead uh, with, the, with the research easily. And um, what resources exist? So do we? I, do I have enough materials? Do I have the lab, the tools, the archive methodologies? And do I have enough materials? So what you will do is to make sure that you have, you have your topic, go to your library resources, do a very broad topic, make sure that you have uh, access to those content. Yeah? Of course, you can also go to your open web to see but open web uh, is more like, you know, to just to have understanding about the topic, you know, in a very uh, broader way. But if you want to go do an in in-depth analysis, make sure you have uh, uh, the resources available in your uh, institutions as well. Okay, these are all questions you will, you will be asking. You will know, read, read more about it when you go into your, uh, into the, um, the e-learning module that I've shared with you yeah, earlier. Okay, now undertaking the literature review, this is one topic by itself. Yeah, this is, I think most of you, uh, if you are explored to, um, you know, how to do a conduct a literature review effectively, I'm sure you have, you know how uh, this works. So basically why is it literature review? What is the purpose of the literature review? It actually increases the breadth of the knowledge of the area of your research. So you probably don't see it only from one single point of view. You probably will see it uh, from a different point of view. Even some of it, some of it, probably it's not agreeing with your argument. You may want to even look at that. So you will see from multiple point viewpoint. Yeah, the, the literature. That's why it's important for you to look at the literature review and write the literature review uh, effectively. And of course, it helps you to reinventing uh, the wheel by discovering the research already been conducted. So there's no point doing a research that has already been conducted. And of course, this by doing so, it helps you to identify the gaps uh, and the current knowledge and the seminal work in your in your area. So once you have completed, basically, you are able to even talk about that uh, the research uh, in a way in more in depth. Yeah, that's why it's uh, very important to 
talk about to write a literature review and also it allows to provide intellectual context for your works so you can position your research with other related research, uh, searches or findings uh, across the world and of course again we talked about the opposing viewpoints um, you don't have just one narrow to the points that you supporting your your arguments but you also look at the opposing viewpoints so that you can uh, put in some um, how your your critical viewpoints can be exposed here as well so okay that's that's basically why is it important and uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about that literature review, you can go to this site here as well. I will share this uh, this presentation so that you can also go into those sites uh, if you want to. Yeah. Okay. So knowing where to go for the literature review is one thing, but conducting an effective search is very important. So performing the targeted database search, yeah, perform a targeted database search, uh, identify appropriate search strategies for graduate work. This is very important. So before I go into the detail, um, usually I will recommend uh, users to go to your library portal. If you have your library catalog, or if you have your discovery layer, that's where you should start your search. So in a very broader concept, so you are not um, bounded by any databases or any specific uh, content, but just do a search to see how much content do I have if I want to start my uh, my research on this particular uh, topic. Yeah? So from there, you will know, okay, actually I have huge content from ebooks, from uh, databases, from, you know, from internal repository, I do have access to it. So that's good. And the other one, of course, you will do an open web search to just to have a background understanding what has been done, like, you know, you have to keep yourself up, you know, what is going on and so on. So that is one way to, um, to do start your uh, to find your information, your literature, literature searching techniques. And once you have found the right uh, database, then you go into the, the targeted database because you need to find information like uh, scholarly journals, conference papers, dissertation and thesis, because then you have to go for a targeted database. So when you are into any of this targeted database, you will need to uh, find for the search tips, yeah, you need to find for the search tips, uh, you know, not, not find for the search, you need to apply some of the search tips. So, you know, some databases, they're slightly different. So for ProQuest, it applies some of these Boolean operators, the phrase searching, the narrowing the filters, word variance. So the, the, by applying some of these techniques, you will be able to uh, find more relevant information easily. So with that, then you can actually save them into your, um, research folder or you know you can download it you can also export to the citation management system and etc so that is why it's important to find that information and uh, save those information or work with the uh, with the citation management system and etc okay so because we are we want you to explore not only for a specific platform so explore from a wide range of disciplines in the database. So if you go into your library portal, of course, you will know you have different uh, range of content you, you, or content providers. You can explore them. So for, for from uh, business, of course, you can also look at uh, different, different subjects as well, if you have access to that. Okay. Okay. Now I'm coming back to, um, coming back to the, uh, dissertation and thesis. So once you are, you have identified the relevant uh, dissertation and thesis that you want to read further, of course, you will read it from the abstract, yeah, from the abstract, and look out for the references. Yeah, look out for the references. When you click on the references, this will take you to the references or the sources used to come up with this uh, dissertation and thesis to complete this. So from here, you are exposed to the sources whether you have it in your institution or not but you do now you know okay i need to read this uh, this particular journal i need to read this particular dissertation or i need to read this article that's relevant to the uh, to the uh, to this topic that i'm working on so you can dive a little bit deeper into the references if you want to i will show example later okay now instead of just going into the 
the rep when you come into the references. So you will see if it is being hyperlinked, of course, you can access it through your platform. If it is not, may, most likely you may not have access, but you can also, uh, you know, look up for an alternative uh, options to look up for those topics as well. Okay, so then here you. And from here, if you want to go further and say, why is this article is cited by so many other uh, articles? So you probably want to go into these articles and access it and see why do they cite this? And when they cite it, do they cite it with the same argument that I have? Or is it something contradicting to me or something that, uh, you know, opposing of my ideas and so on? So this is where you go into looking at the cited by. Okay. Okay, now when you have um, information, you got this information, you you need to curate that information. Yeah, you need to curate that information. I'm going to take you through um, this platform first. Okay. Just a minute. So the, let's say that this topic is basically just a very generic topic right now. I'm going to talk about mental health illness yeah? or mental health related topic because I'm pretty identified. This is the topic that I want to, or I can also go depression or, or anxiety or any other topic that you want to include because I'm already like kind of refined, I defined my topic of search. Okay, then I can formulate the question once I have read this example. Yeah. So, so you can go in something like that. You should go into this uh, platform. Hold on. Okay. Now you do have huge collections of information that is all this is about talking about mental health, mental uh, illness, uh, is either def, uh, depression or even anxiety. But what you want to be more focused is, you know, that the discussion about this is actually um, highly discussed at this era. You can see it's on the peak. So you can refine it here. Okay. And like I said, this is the combination of you have content with full text and abstracts. We, we, uh, I think we talked about it earlier. But if you say, no, I, I don't want, you can leave it like this and explore the topic. So you know that this particular uh, research exists, but you don't have access to the to the full text. But you can refine it to full text if you want to. Yeah, you can refine it to the full text so that you can only have access to the full text. So why do you are looking at this? This way you will look at the references uh, to know what uh, are the sources. What are the sources has been used uh, to to come up with this dissertation and thesis? And why is this uh, dissertation and thesis being cited? Um, many times, and this is eight times. So you can also access to both directly. So when you go to the references, basically it will take you to the content that's been used. So you either, if you don't have the link, you probably have to look up for the alternative sources elsewhere if, if it's not available in your library. But if it's available, then of course you can um, look at it directly. And this part here, okay, well, who have cited, who have cited my article, this article? Okay, so you can see this is cited by even in the journals, yeah, even journals, and also by dissertation and thesis and so on. So you can um, see why they cite that. Hold on a second, yeah. Okay. So who have cited that, and you can see why they cite it and how they cite it. Is it citing? saying that, you know, I'm talking about the same point or, you know, different points. So from there, you are able to gauge and say, oh, okay, this is not the one way that I should look at it. I can look at it from a different perspective. Okay. Now I want to go back to uh, this another part here. On your right here, 
that is also a related terms, related items. That means if you have a topic that relevant to mental health or mental illness, then your uh, related uh, topics or related articles will be also exp uh, exposed here. So you can quickly zoom into that article. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, share with you some um, some uh, hands-on exercise to access to dissertation and thesis. So before that, uh, I just want to um, to share how you can access to this dissertation and thesis from your university. Yeah? Maybe uh, Ms. Sharifa, you want to share that information? Do you want to share that information? Sorry, Ms. Kurinji. Do you, do you want to share how to access to this progress dissertation and thesis from your library? I think that was a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can access uh, PQDT from uh, our portal, the library portal, bsnz.umt.edu.my, and then click. Um, uh, can you please go to yeah. uh, our portal? Yeah. Can you yeah. see that? Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, from this page, uh, scroll down. Scroll down a bit. Okay. Uh, you see e resources. This uh, uh, the second box from uh, the left. Okay. E resources. Then click e resources. Okay, uh, this list is arranged uh, in alphabetical order. So please scroll down to uh, progress and you see this, uh, this link, progress, dissertations and thesis global. Uh, if you click this, uh, there are two links. Uh, um, the first link, uh, the, the title of the database, uh, is uh, uh, you can access it from uh, in campus. So if you are uh, off campus, then you click off campus access. And uh, there, are, uh, there is another way uh, to access uh, the, the database from off campus. Uh, on your left hand panel, you see login easy proxy, login easy proxy link. So this, uh, okay. When you see this box, okay, please key in your uh, username and password, your minimal username and password. Uh, that is uh, your metric uh, number or your email ID and the password is your pass uh, minimal password. And then log in, then you will get uh, the full list of uh, databases, uh, ebooks and e journal. Yeah. So please uh, look up for the uh, progress dissertation uh, when you scroll down to P uh, alphabet. Yeah. So it's now clear. Yeah, it's actually available to all of you. Basically, you have to go into your library portal. Your, your library has a huge uh, number of resources. So if you want to focus on progress dissertation and thesis, these are the steps like uh, Ms. Sharifa has uh, taken us through that are the steps that you need to take. Yeah, so just access it. Uh, you should be able to access to this content. So from there, of course, you will also go into that uh, the link that I shared to the e-learning portal for you to uh, have an idea of how to how do I start my dissertation and thesis, what I need to know, you know, exploring. First thing is exploring the uh, dissertation and thesis, either from your internal repository or from the uh, this uh, uh, dissertation and thesis global. Yeah? And of course, uh, I, there is a search, search techniques and so on. I have covered this in um, one of my previous uh, session, but today's session we are more to you know uh, to take through the flow of the um, from, from uh, the research flow basically. Okay, okay I want to um, I want to share with no, it's just a hands-on exercise because now you know how to access to. Um, before we do the quizzes, we do the hands-on exercise. Just a minute, yeah.
those who have, uh, have, can you access to the links that I just share with you? Okay, thank you. And for those who have classes or events after this, just go ahead because I'm recording the session. You can uh, listen to the recording later, yeah? If anyone have problems accessing to the link that I just shared, Okay, for those who have, um, I hope you have completed. Uh, so, okay, yes, yes, please, um, uh, Mohammed Khairu Rijal, can you just uh, share with me what is that you want to share? Yes, what, what is your question like? Hold on a second, yeah. Okay, let me unmute your speaker. One second, let me get the name correct. Okay. Okay, I have unmuted your speaker. You can talk now. Hello? Can, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you, Miss. Uh so my question is uh uh my interested topic. It's a hmm. uh, kind of niche. It's not exactly hmm. niche, but uh, when I search uh, briefly uh, to check whether someone already did, uh, did this topic before, mm -hmm. uh, how to say this? Uh, there are not exactly many similar topics uh written about this okay. so why why it is a good thing for us mm. because uh we can write a new thing but mm. it's also give me a big problem of finding literature Sources. to yes yes to uh how to say this yeah, yeah, to, to, yeah to support your to support your yeah, research right? to support okay. my research and develop it and so i uh i try to find keywords that uh uh brought to expand my uh literature finding hmm. so i found this one uh, specific keywords anti intellectualism uh the definition of this keyword is exactly what i want but the problem is is uh this keyword is heavily bounded with uh American history, American political history. So when I search anti-intellectualism in the search box, uh for example in this ProQuest, mm -hmm. it uh it will direct me towards uh American political related articles. They they are that there are articles that are not exactly uh, closely related to American political history, but uh, they don't exactly give uh, literature value to my research. So okay. what's your thought in this uh, situation? Yeah, because this is, uh, like I said, this dissertation and thesis global is actually from almost like a uh, across the world, yeah, 100 countries, and more mainly from US, mainly, mostly the dissertations are, the participating universities are from US, 
uh, and also in in the in the UK. But my my advice is, of course, when you see this, you will see it from the uh, the American perspective, right? You will see it from American perspective. So I would suggest to take that. But you probably have an idea as you just see the ideas, but you want to imply to the local context. So you probably have to do the same search again uh, in the any of your research database that you have in your in your in your institution, or you can do quick open open web search, or you go into the library, see if there's any books or articles that supports your that research. Because right now, if you have done yours is about uh, anti intellectualism, is it? Yes. If there's any, so if you um, uh, uh, another way is um, okay. Let me do a se separate search. Hold on a second. Yeah, just give me a minute. <laughs> okay. So there you. How did you do it? You put in something like that. You probably have your own terms as well. Yes, yes. Just a minute. Okay, so this is what you are looking for. So it can be at the title. So if you are looking at, uh, because it's, this is like kind of, uh, you already, you know, you you know your topic of search already. It's kind of a topic. Or then again, if you just want to expand it, you say, or oh, it can be appearing in the abstract because you know the abstract, it appears in the abstract. It's very important to you. Okay, now we can search it all the way. Yeah? Make sure that you search it all the way. And um, don't, don't refine yet. But when you want to see this, not that many though, it's about um, 101 searches. Okay, so again, this is your this is what you're talking about, right? You're talking about it talks about the American history, political. But it what is your context? What are you uh, referring to uh, in your in your research? What is your reference to? Uh, my context is within Malaysian Muslim community. Uh, okay. Then okay, okay. Then it, it definitely this is you may be may not be able to find because it's coming from different um, from across the world, right? So it's coming from different different perspective. What you can yes. have is to have your ideas. How is this drafted? You know, how is this context been done? What are the methodology used and things like that? Example, but your literature has to be go back to your go to the library portal and look up for. Um, look up for the, the the context that is in local. So it may not be just the literature that you find in books and things like that. You probably have to do a little bit more of the survey and things like that. So I think I that's how you will be able to apply it. Most of them, this is definitely, this definitely you will have the, um, uh, the different cultural concepts here. So usually towards the end, I always make sure that I'll say, make sure we comply to our local our uh, local cultural as well as our social um, uh, related, uh, you know, whatever that's related to our social social and cultural con uh, context. So I usually will say that. Okay. okay. So that will be my advice. That's a good question. So again, remember resources available in library. You need to explore it a bit. Beyond that, if you don't find it, then you go for. Um, you know, look up for other alternative resources or databases, then you go to the open web as well. From open web, even you don't find it, you will know where to look up for uh, content as well. Yeah? So this basically the dissertation and thesis is by the graduate works across the world and mainly most of it from US. And like if you're talking about Asia, we have India, uh, China, uh, Hong Kong has a huge collection. In Malaysia, we are just, we have one or two um, institutions have participated. We are expanding in Malaysia, Singapore, as well as in Thailand and the uh, uh, Philippines right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, right. Thank you for the question. That's very, very interesting question. 
uh, and um, you know then we know how to um, maximize the use of the content not only from dissertation and thesis but also other resources okay i just want to go back to the slides again okay there's a question on may i know where to find the index field to search okay let me take a few more minutes to just to go through the index field. So usually, uh, this is for Tanling, if you have asked this question. Okay, let me take examples. So to clear the form, usually you will do this. Don't do like what I did, remove it. So here is your advanced search. So in advanced search is where your search fields are, your index fields are. Yeah. So you can either go by abstract uh, or you go by subject heading or subject heading in indexing, including the uh, granular subject, okay, the document title. And for those who want to go more in detail, you can go for the advisors, um, you know, the degrees, the department, and so on. But usually, if you know, then you can easily search for it. And the highly indexed area is here. You can look up for authors, advisors, or institution, or in, in, uh, if, you're, if you're saying, okay, I want to see what has been done, uh, research has been done in the University of Oxford, for example. So you can say, go to Oxford. Thing like that yeah so there are actually many other ex oxford universities uh, listed but what you're interested in is the university of Ox oxford yeah you have fifty thousand world research here so you can do a quick search like that and see what is their leading research topic so from here you can see their subjects is mainly on of course they are british and the irish uh, literature but if you are working on uh, something that relevant to political science or even uh, neurosciences or medicines or um, any other topic, yeah, history, whatever, so you can see what uh, topic has been done by them. But if you have something more granular, like uh, say if your research topic is on augmented reality, just example, yeah, it can be any topic augmented reality. Okay, I want, I want to show is this part here. Okay, so you can find, is there any research uh, on augmented reality, but there are many. Uh, so you can look up for those with more numbers. Yeah, for example, this one here. It's, uh, it's the common one. So just pick up those two. Okay. Now search and see what is the research on augmented reality all about so if you are interested in looking at it from the um, you know, virtual reality computer vision or from subject perspective real relevant to educational technology you can go and uh, look up for those co this content accordingly so now what i'm showing you is basically how do you look up for this content once you have this information what do you do next yeah what do you do next is, is in the powerpoint slide let's go back Okay, so you can, you know, the research techniques, you, 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 you will find some uh, basic ones, but if you're really uh, doing extensive search, you may need to apply some good, uh, really, techniques like incorporating the or the parentheses, and so on. So I'm not covering that here, but that is, uh, it, that will be part of your, uh, in the e-learning modules as well, yeah. So let's say you have covered and you say you find so many uh, so many results. Uh, of course, you can limit it and say, I want to look at the uh, results from the um, specifically on dissertation and thesis, or you can also confine it to you know, looking at it from uh, last 10 years and so on. So once you have confined it, you have a features like you know, save, save, save this information into your platform. So once you have saved it, you can come back the next day and run and look at the review the other content and once you have said okay these are the content is relevant to me but i have not decided whether to use this as my literature review content you can move them into your research portal your your my research folder and put it into a folder so you can come back and say okay let me review again before i move it to my 
um, my citation management system. And for those who say, I, this is my topic of research for next six months, I want to get a new update. If there's any dissertation and thesis on this particular topic added next month or next, next week, I want to be alerted. So you can create alerts and so on. These are tools that supports you to go, you know, to go through your research, um, um, your journey of your research. So again, remember, research is not you will not complete your research to start your writing, but you once you found some information, you already put into your structures already. Your structures can be based on what you've given to you by advisor, or if you have an idea you want to um, if, if you want to start your search. Uh, or you want to put in your content based on what you think is right. So it's, it's all start, start first, start a draft first. Okay. Okay. To start the draft, this is what I was talking about. This is your research folder. You can put in all your documents here. You can create a folder here. Okay. And start putting all your documents here. And of course, um, you, uh, you would then, after you have put it here, you will open up and analyze the content from the table of content to you go into the abstract or even you read the whole entire articles and find the real argument that supports you. And uh, then you, you will probably highlight that or even extract that from there. Okay. Now, for those who are using citation management system, that is very good. Um, for here, examples I have on DraftWorks, but if you are having access to Mendeley or Zotero or any other citation management system, you're not to worry. So if you are in this platform, okay, if you're in this platform, all that you do is, you know, just select these articles, select these articles, go to the three dots here. Okay. So you see that you have a RefWorks. Uh, that's that's a directly it will actually import it directly to the RefWorks if you are integrated if you have RefWorks or Noodle Tools or EasyBib. But if you have other than that, if you have Mendeley or if you have Zotero, you have EndNote. You just export them into the um, into the RIS file. Yeah, yeah, this is the RIS file. So just continue. Okay, they probably have uh, some verification to be done. Miss Karinji, yeah, uh, you empty subscribe to uh, Mendeley, so it is recommended uh, for the you empty students to use uh, Mendeley. Okay. Yeah, so if you are using Mendeley, is this this the step? This is the step you should do. See what I did earlier. Go to the risk file, open the risk file, open in a notepad. Okay, so you will have all this information here. Then you go into your Mendeley um, platform, and from there. Once you have saved this, you import it. You import it to your Mendeley. Then you will see your uh, bibliography information will appear in your um, Mendeley system. Is that clear right now? Just back one step, yeah? Because you are using Mendeley, none of that uh, uh, this. So if you are using Mendeley, go to the RIS file. So download it as a RIS file. Save it as a notepad. Save it as a notepad. And import, go to your Mendeley, import this file, then you will have the bibliography. So is that clear? Yeah, okay. okay so, uh, so having the citation management system is very easy for you to import and organize the references, even if you want to do the uh, inside citation. So it's much more easier to have all that into your citation management system yeah, and the styling styling of your citation. Okay. Now, developing a productive writing is very important. So once you have got all your information, put it into one place, either in Mendeley, or if you are using others, that's fine. So if you already put that into your Mendeley system, so now you start writing, a, uh, uh, you need to start a plan. So like we say, research and writing is always interconnected. So make sure that you, um, from the day one, you start it, you do have your plans, you know, uh, make sure that this is the day that I want to do this and things like that. You have a quick plan. So you will know that if you are delayed two days or one day, then you need to know how much time you need to back up whatever that have, uh, have been delayed, you see. Otherwise, you, you come to that last part of the, uh, the last one month or last two months of the uh, before submitting the due date, you will be really, really under stress. That's the, when you're in stress, then you do not know whether you are 
doing it right, whether you're putting in enough information, is your thoughts are right, you know. So don't 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 do that. So make sure that you have these plans ahead, uh, and always uh, start with zero draft. Yeah, always make sure you have a draft. So when you have a draft, it's easier for you to go to your your advisors and you can talk about it, you can discuss about it. If you don't have a draft, there's nothing for you to discuss. So very important to start the draft from the early stage of your research. Um, yeah, before, um, way before even you think you enough to start writing. So again, this is again talking about research, write, research, write, repeat, and so on. So make sure that you have the draft before you, um, so that you can have, you have a productive writing, you have a very good flow, flow to be continued. Okay. The editing part, not to worry, that will be much, much later. Okay. So scheduling, this is straightforward. I'm sure you know how to plan it. You can use any tools to plan that, you know, you set up your writing depends on your, the, the heaviness of your uh, dissertation and this is your points you carries right if it's a if it's a major work it's the major things in in your dissertation and in in your in your research or academic writing so make sure you spend more time but if it's just part of it is just to clear one paper you probably just have a lesser time to spend so you just all have to um you know just uh, plan it accordingly okay okay so these are again all about plan this information is very highly discussed in the Third module, developing a productive writing plan. So I won't go into uh, this uh, details much, uh, much into these details. You will learn it. Uh, you will go through that uh, e-learning modules later. Okay. So some of these overcoming obstacles, I'm sure this has been already uh, discussed with you all uh, by your advisors, by your lecturers. Yeah. That the problem is when we want to write, we want to make sure the draft is perfect. Uh, it happened to me also. I wanted to make sure it's it's perfect, but it is not the way. So as long as you have a draft, you know what you're doing. That's better. So you don't have to think it think so much. Um, you know, to to make sure that it's perfect with the spelling, with the spacing, with everything that you want it to be perfect. That can be corrected later. Uh, it's much easier to be corrected later. Okay, and of course scheduling. Um, schedule your writing when you think. If you are, if you are a person, morning person, then you make sure that you put a lot more effort in the morning. But if you are a night um, working better in the night, you're, pro you're more productive at the night. So you make sure that heavy work is put into your work, um, you know, according to your uh, your uh, own style, your own way. Yeah? And of course, the discussion uh, with the with your advisor is, should be continuous, continuously going on. Uh, and that's the that's where you can develop a lots of ideas. Uh, you know, go back and forth, back and forth. You will have a lots of ideas. Yeah. So this, uh, this, those are some of these, um, uh, you know, uh, kind of strategies you need to, to to apply. I'm sure you will. You are you are given all this uh, tips and um, advice in your institution. So again, writing. Make sure that you are. Uh, you have a group of people to discuss. Yeah, I think that's very important. When somebody writes, you write it, and then you get someone to read it, and then you see whether that's a, is the flow correct. Is then is the is the points are all in, in sequence and so on. So you can have a group of people to talk about. Yeah? Okay. Now the important thing is we need to uh, accept criticize criticization. So if is if you're given to someone to read and if they give you an idea or they give you back some feedbacks, make sure we are we are able to accept it. So it always happens if you go back to advisor or if you get to go to your peers, it's always like, you know, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. So you probably have to take that feedback and also um, then you put it clearly from your perspective once you have uh, your own points. Yeah. Okay. Now, so in summary, so once you have found the literatures, uh, you will, you know, start reading, identifying the patterns, the conflicts, the debates, the contradicting views, uh, you know, all that gaps and so on. You, you, that is the most. So when you read it, as uh, when you read um, dissertation and thesis, it's no longer reading a novel. Yeah, you meet, you have to read it two, three times to understand the the ideas and the concepts. So in summaries, synthesize it, you know, the points uh, from a different multiple sources. So then you analyze it, you interpret it, you critically evaluate it, yeah, put in both the, the pros and the cons in the context and so on. And 
importantly, writing without, um, you know, to, to avoid the plagiarism. So usually when we copy some phrases or, you know, get some ideas, we will definitely have, uh, you know, detections of the plagiarism. So to avoid that, this is the, this is the very difficult part. You must have to have to extract the, the paragraph that you want to, uh, you want to emphasize. And then you need to paraphrase it, phrase it, basically paraphrase it to make sure that it is not plagiarizing. Or either you use some own words, use your synonyms or whatever. So you do that. And always cite, cite the resources. So the citation styles, make sure, go back to your institution, ask which citation styles is required for this study, this particular uh, in from, uh, this particular uh, dissertation, what is this, um, what is our institution citation style and how do I do it? All those in information, yeah. So I just want to go back. So we have spoken about uh, 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 plagiarism, yeah. Do not uh, make sure that you don't get into the plagiarism. That's very, very, um, that, because it's your ideas, but you are not able to put it into the, the, the writing uh, accordingly. So that might, uh, you know, have the plagiarism. So you make sure that you paraphrase it or you write it on your own, uh, or in your own words. But usually uh, for the paraphrase, uh, for the plagiarism, also you can check with the institution, what is the percent, percentage of uh, plagiarism is being accepted so that you know if you are within that range, that's fine, you can move on with that, okay? And how you can check that, of course, you can check with all the tools that provided by your institution. Usually the turn it in is, Will be some of the um, plagiarism checking tools. Yeah, okay. citation and reference very important. Always acknowledge the tools, uh, the, the the sources that you have uh, got it from. Uh, the bibliography is all listed. Either you do it the inside citation, or you uh, have it as a references. Make sure that is all done. Yeah? Okay, so this is what we talk about detecting plagiarism. Okay. Very importantly, go to your supervisor or your advisor uh, talking about the, the dissertations structure. So remember, you probably have the structure, you probably have an examples from this dissertation and thesis, your structure. Then take the structure and say, this is my topic. Go back to your supervisor and say, is this the structure you are looking for? Or you, do you have your own structure? If it's not, then you can apply your own structure. Otherwise, go back to your supervisor, make sure that the structure is according to their, uh, their expectation. Yeah? So that is very important. Citation style is very important. Reference carries marks as well. Make sure you do it right. <clears throat> And the style guide provided by institution and so on. Okay. Last part. This is the very last part. So what's what happens? I let's say I have um, done, uh, spent a lot of my time, put in a lot of effort to complete this dissertation and thesis, and I want to publish my thesis. So this can be published in your international repository. Sorry, institutional repository. That's I think you can check with the internal library team how do you want to publish it. And if you want to be, if you want to this content to be amplified further, of course, um, the, your institution can work very closely with uh, ProQuest uh, and say, okay, all my master's thesis or my dissertation, my doctoral dissertation, I want to publish it in uh, in the uh, ProQuest so that the content is accessible by people across the world. So it, it doesn't matter if you are, if your uh, research is done in even in uh, our language, Malay language, or even if it's in English, you can publish it. But if you're in English, then your accessibility is higher, right? You have more people to access it. So it can be published any of those um, language, uh, either of those language. This is from any of those language. So, uh, how do I do, you know, how do I publish the thesis into a journal article that can be done? Of course, you, you identify the appropriate uh, target journals and then shorten the length of your thesis, reformat some of this introduction as an extract, <coughs> modify the introduction, tighten the method, uh, method section. Okay, these are all uh, just a few points. How do you want to, once you have done your thesis, you, you want to publish it as a journal, then you do. Uh, the next next level that's required. Yeah. Okay. So here you go. If you want to publish information to the dissertation and thesis, it can be found um, 
found here. So we are at uh, the summary, but before I go to the summary, I just want you to make sure that you go to this, <coughs> this site here. Hold on. Okay, so this is the about ProQuest of uh, dissertation in e-learning. So as you scroll down, <clears throat> here, the e-learning module. This probably takes about 30 minutes. I think 30 minutes is enough for you to go through getting started on your dissertation and thesis. Some of it I have covered, but you will see more in detail information here. And the discovery, how to find the right information, if applying some uh, effective searches, it can be, be found here as well. And the last part, how do you want to develop a productive writing plan? This is just a writing plan. So there are some of these tips you need to apply. So on, when you start writing, only you will know, okay, I need more information. I have a gap here. I'm not uh, on, on the right flow. If you don't write, you never know. So make sure that this is starts uh, uh, as early as your research starts, yeah? As early as your research starts. Okay, you can explore this and uh, this can be embedded into the library file as well, or even into your, uh, this can be used as a e-learning management, uh, e-learning tools for um, for the lecturers for through the e-learning management system as well, yeah, can be integrated, <coughs> can be integrated to learning management system. Okay, now I have about another, almost about, um, 18 minutes. I have the second part of the uh, uh, hands on exercise. But before that, do you have questions so far? Uh, miss? Yeah. One last question for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you write your research, do you, uh, okay, you already, you already have an idea of what you're going to write about, but mm -hmm. uh, do you create the title first, then develop your writings or develop your writing first and the title uh, you will create it at the end? That's a good question. Yeah, but to me, it's very important. If you have the title, then you can formulate your research question, right? If you don't have the title, you then you don't you you won't know. You are very very um, what do you call very broad, and you do not refine to to the title. Uh, but this having said this, there are many times it happens. I'm sure you can ask your advisors. Uh, even you have started the research, you halfway through then you will find you are not able to go ahead with that. Then you go back to, again, start the new uh, topics. This, this happens to many people. This is a common thing. In, that is why the planning is very important, even if you have a delay. So you need to make sure that you have done. So it can be done two ways, but my, my preferences, uh, if, you, if you ask your lecturers, I'm sure they have their preferences, to have the research topic first. Only then you can formulate research question you can formulate the frameworks and so on. If you don't have uh, the topic first, then you may not, but the topic can be adjusted as you go on. If you're going a little bit, um, you know, out of that, uh, the main topic and you find that is, you can, you can modify the topic accordingly, but these are all depends on your, your advisors, whether they're not, whether or not they want to go that way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to share this, the other part. While you're doing the assessment, just uh, let me get some other things here.
Okay, this is another assessment. Okay, so don't worry about the assessment question. It's just for you to like kind of recap what you have done. I have picked here and there just to do quickly run through. Uh, if you don't get to answer that, not to worry. It's just to expose and say, okay, this is what we have done earlier. And that's a recap of it. Yeah. To be probably take about two minutes. I will come back to you shortly. Okay. Okay. So I'm coming to the end of the session. So I have covered all the important points that you need to, uh, you know, you need uh, the, the 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 essential points for your to start your dissertation or thesis or even project papers, even, you know, and even assignments, you can use some of these examples. Okay, so we have covered all the important points we discussed in the very beginning of the session. So with that, I am ending the session. If you have any questions, you can, uh, you feel free to uh, send it to me, Sharifa, or you can uh, email to me directly here. And thank you so much for your participation. Some of you have really have good question. That's very appreciative. Yeah, very, very um, good questions. Uh, and um, and uh, uh, and yeah, there's a quick hold on a second. Let me address this question first. Yeah, hold on. Any is there any other question? Okay, we have surpassed about 10 minutes uh, from the time we planned. Uh, no problem. So I don't see any other question here. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Uh, and uh, what I will do is I will share the uh, share this uh, information with um, Sharifa, the recording as well as the presentation file, so you can have access to it. Most importantly, you can go to the on to the open web to the uh, dissertation bootcamp and start um, going through those modules here. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Sharifa, do you want to say uh, say anything? It's a closing. Yeah. Closing. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Karinji, for such an informative uh, presentation. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have we, uh, you on board today. So I believe the attendees uh, approximately about 48 participants who joined us today yeah. uh, have taken uh, some new added knowledge from the session. So before we end the session, just to remind uh, the MT students and staff, we have two other uh, online database trainings this afternoon and one more tomorrow morning so do do feel free to join all of the uh, sessions and other activities that psnc has organized during the open day uh, today and tomorrow so thank you everyone and see you next time thank you miss karinji thank you thank you Ms. sharifa thank you so much everyone have a great day ahead